we are finishing off with someone who, not for the first time in boxing, thinks he was hard done by when it came to the judge's verdict. Uh, you know who I'm talking about here. Back in Riyadh on Friday night, uh, Spence, Simon and I spoke to Nick Ball this week following the very disappointing, shall we call it, outcome to his fight. When uh, up against the Mexican Ray Vargas, it looked as though Ball had done more than enough to win it. But the judges went 116-110 Ball. Uh-huh. 114-112 Vargas. What? And 113-113 the third judge declaring it a draw. And the whole thing was declared a draw. And now they've got to do it again. Or maybe they won't. We don't know. But Nick Ball spoke to us this week, Spencer. And uh, we asked him what Frank Warren, his promoter, had told him. He said... Uh... I should be world champion, and he, he's gonna. He thinks he can try and get the the rematch, but I don't really know. I don't think that that, that Vargas. He, he'd have to be getting paid well for him to take it. So I'm not too sure. I'll probably find out this week later on in this week. I think I'll I'll find out more. Hopefully he takes it and um, get another shot. I mean, it was an incredibly brave performance from Ball. Talk about plucky. He was mm. all over the Mexican. It seemed that he'd won it. You thought he'd won it, it Simon, yeah? On As the second everyone, half of the fight, absolutely. On the second half of the fight. And then this, again, it calls into the question of the process and the standard of the judging. Absolutely. Look, it was a fight of two halves. I think that Vargas had um, had Nick Ball's number in the first half of the contest. He was keeping the range well. He was working. Nick Ball was struggling to close the range, close the distance. But he was so persistent. He is what his name is, the wrecking ball. And he just kept going. Going, kept going. I think he had Vargas over in the seventh or the eighth, and again in the eleventh, and that was the deciding factor. I think it was a fight of two halves. Vargas, it should have been like one fifteen, one thirty. Nick Ball was definitely the winner, yeah. and the knockdowns determined that, right? You know, because otherwise it would have been a very close fight. But the knockdowns determined a clear winner in Nick Ball, in my eyes, anyway. Um, I'm hearing June the first, he goes again, a possible world title shot. I'm hearing Ray Vargas actually, the WBA well, champion well, is Ray Ford. Yeah, uh, so Ray sorry, Ford. Ray Ford. Sorry, yeah. is the is the possible opponent? So that's the five v five, isn't it? That's yeah, five v five, five. five. Queensbury. And I Richard, mean, yeah. yeah, Ray Ford. That would be a on great a bivol, fight on a bivol, be, be, better be of undercard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely I mean, that. But Nick Ball wins that one, by the way. It's I, think too, it's too, I, think too I think he fights Ray Vargas again. I think he knocks him out. Yeah, absolutely. I totally regardless agree. of that, though, Spencer, we're almost getting to the stage. You watch a fight and you think, right now, this is going to be interesting. What what are they going to make of this? Mm. You know, when it comes to the judging. The judging's, you know, uh, I know they were talking about, right? They were talking about having five judges, weren't yeah. they, for the undisputed world title fight. We'll go, well, why would you have five judges? If you've got three incompetent judges, they shouldn't be there. Simple as that. Three judges should be enough to determine a winner of a contest. I think that, you know, talk, adding five judges in there, you go, well, what does that say about the judges that you're selecting. So I think, yeah, they definitely need looking at because in recent times, we've seen some terrible decisions in but recent times. To be times. fair to, the, to, to Nick Ball, who we all understand and believe won that fight, he didn't win it 116, 110 either. So the scoring that was scored in his favour wasn't yeah. great either. No, I, no. I, I, I sort of like, I'm looking 115, 130. He won it by two yeah. two points, but clearly, yeah. because it yeah. was... It was a very, it, a, it's it's a very about, clear cut, wasn't it? It's a debate about one of the knockdowns, but that's irrelevant. People don't like the knockdown. It was scored as a knockdown. Exactly yeah. that. Exactly I mean, that. They, they are, yeah, only human. So is it wrong of us to think that they, they might bring about perfection when it comes to that No, process? but you're not asking for perfection. You, you price in margins of error. That's not, we're not talking about perfection. There's no need for perfection to score mm. Cattrall versus Taylor. That's not the perfection. That's just competency yeah. or, or motivation. Yeah. Um, and the same thing here with Nick Ball. The guy was the world title holder. Nick Ball took the fight to him in the second half of the fight once he got his range and got his feet in range and he let, and he dropped him twice yeah. and he was by far the better fighter and irrespective of whether the guy won the first five or the first six rounds, which was debatable, mm. probably probably mm -hmm. more the case, Nick did enough in the second half of the fight to rip it away from him. I yes. totally, totally yeah. agree. And I mean, that's not us just saying this. This, this is the, the general consensus of everybody. So you you know, if everybody else can see it and... The judges can't, can't then they? we have a problem. Why can't they? Where is Joseph Parker then to finish off with today, Spencer? He, he dispatched Zilly Zhang and Deontay Wilder, really, in the space of three months when you think about it. He, he's very much put himself back in the map, hasn't he? Oh, well, look, if you go back 18 months and the way that he was beaten by Joe Joyce and you saw that and it was like, that was a it was sort of brutal finish, really, that 11th round knockout. And I remember looking at Parker and thinking... That could be your days done at the top. That was a that that was a brutal finish. That and some fighters never really come back the same from something like that. Eighteen months fast forward and you beat Deontay Wilder. Now Zelly Zhang and you look at him and this 
added newfound confidence again and that that belief to let his hands go. Because we all know, always knew he had the ability, yeah. but maybe not the confidence to let his hands go. But I think Andy Lee, teaming up with Andy Lee, has been a great partnership. And he's put himself right back up there and right back up in, you know, in, in the top mix. Deservedly I mean, so. Deservedly yeah. so, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you think the negative performance he had against Anthony Joshua, which was but a he's, done he's also done everybody a favour because yeah. he's taken Zhang out of commission because he was one of the most avoided heavyweights no mm. one wanted. And by putting a dent in him, and then tying, I, th I think it's slightly unfair that he's got himself into a second fight, but I guess it was the price on the ticket. He's got to fight Zhang again because Zhang mm. had the mandatory shot. Right. So in order so for him to get an opportunity, yeah, he does it again. again. Well, there's nothing left in that fight, really, for No, Joseph absolutely. Parker. But, I mean, you could, you could mention, like, the likes of, like, Anthony Joshua, Joseph Parker, too. A fight that everyone would love to see now because both guys have, have come on and they're different fighters now. It's a good fight again. Do you want I to mean, see that? I, 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 I would. Would you? Okay. Why, why not? Because I'd like to see Anthony go and beat Hergovic, win the world oh, title. Oh, no, I'm and talking fight about, but what I'm saying is that they're, they're the sort of fights now we can talk about again and go, yeah, yeah I'd like to he's, see he's that again. He's right for that conversation, Joseph. Oh, Parker, oh absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. On top of all that, he, now there is a brilliant ambassador for his own sport, Joseph Parker. Oh, absolutely. What, what a guy a as well. What a guy. What a lovely man. Yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. I mean, not that lovely. He didn't answer my text, by the way. I've sent him a text to come on this show. Really? Told him, you know, we've got this award-winning show that you've been on, Joseph, and, you know, I know you're not a big fan of Simon, but Jim, you know... Yeah, I, don't, I get into it. I get, I'm perfectly well with Joseph Parker. <laughs> I'm only <really> joking. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, yeah, but we uh, no response. He's at home spending time with his family, and rightly so as well. I mean, he lives over here in Morecambe, up there training with Tyson Fury and the Furies, and so he's spending some right well-earned rest at home um, in New Zealand. So good. Do you need me to text him, Spencer? Please, and I'll could. distance myself yeah. from uh, Polo Night Boy. <laughs> Okay. Joseph oh, yeah, he's still wearing them, by the way. Yeah, yes. different yeah. colours, though. As you see, a multitude yeah, yeah. of colours. We, we, we both had one on, on our show. I wore a black one in. I noticed that. Yeah. Did uh, you say, oh, you yeah. have, oh, you watch it then? Yeah, I was right. Well, somebody showed me it. Um, <laughs>